Hello and welcome to the library. My name is Sard and I am your host and narrator. Now before we get started, I do have a very special little announcement. This little baby here beside me, this is Yui, if you don't already know. He is my partner in crime, my pride and joy, and my baby honey bear. And today, today, June 6th, he turns one year old. So it's a very happy birthday to my baby Yui. Now, oh no, I'm already starting. Excuse me. Now, I would like to send out a very quick thank you so much to all the people who have liked, subscribed, followed, both here on Twitch and on YouTube and on Twitter. It has been very awesome getting to know you, and I do greatly appreciate all of your support. It really keeps me going. Uh, today, we will be starting with Chapter 40 of Married Thrice to Salted Fish, as you may know from last week. Lu Wan, yeah, Lu Wan Chang is dead. Yeah, spoilers. Um, but if you don't know that, then you you won't quite understand exactly what's going on to begin with. So that's fine. Um, I will have some questions in that as we get going, or uh, a little bit later. But uh, there's a lot to get through today, and I want to make sure that I get through all of it. Um, also, it is a Monday. And today was busy. Excuse me. Um, <coughs> I have also been thinking lately about expanding the uh, the both the library and Sarah's audio fan fictions, also on YouTube, also on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. We're everywhere. Um, and I have had some ideas as to what possibly might be interesting to you, my listeners and my followers. Uh, so we will be going over that a little bit later, maybe at the end of the stream. Um, actually, no, let's do it now before we get started. Okay, so here are my ideas so far. Son of a bitch, stop yawning. <laughs> Hasn't, I have not been doing that at all. And then as soon as we start the stream, it starts doing that. I don't know. Um, okay, so here, let me get, I got my book out here. Uh, okay. Things we can expand on as in like a little extras. Um, we can talk strictly BL and all that it pertains to. Um, we can do fan fiction, talking about what's new, um, how to write good fan fiction, how to... Uh, be a proper beta, or people call it beta, I call it a beta, beta writer, beta reader. Um, we can talk Asian dramas, that's a big one that I follow, and then I know that there's not a lot of people who uh, know that there is actually already, not just the stuff that's coming up, although that looks really good too, but there is already really good, um, especially BL Asian dramas out there. So that that's one thing. One thing that I was thinking about, especially for over on SAF, is um, I use Calibre as my main library source. And I've gotten a lot of questions over the years as to how to use Calibre with my fanfic and essentially make it so that you can take all your fanfic with you at a single click of a button and have it update. So that's one thing, a tutorial that I could go over. Um, also my, everything that you see on the screen right now, I made in Canva. Uh, the only exception is my, and really the only exception is, um, oops, stay there, is my avatar here. Um, I did actually create her, so I did the art for her. I, um, but I did pay a rigor to bring her to life. Uh, he had to add a few little extras that I didn't know about, that I didn't know it needed. Uh, in order to rig it, but so, but all of the art here that you see and in the next screen, um, for all of it, really, all of it comes from Canva. And so I thought that, that might be a really neat kind of tutorial thing to do. Um, I do have two games, two games that I would like to play. I have to get, uh, the card for it. Um, but one is, uh, I want to stream the new... Pokemon when it comes out. 
the Scarlet and Violet. I think I already know which version I'm going to go for, though not a lot has come out about it. Um, but I have ideas. Um... It's very hard to type when my my microphone's directly in front. Um, sorry. Uh, my other option is is one of my absolute most favoritist games, and I actually got uh, got to play it when I went over to Japan in uh, one of the arcades. Uh, the is it Taiko no Tatsujin? Taiko no Tatsujin. It's it's the one the drum one, drums and fun. Um, but yeah, it's one of my favorite games, and I loves it, and I would love to do that on stream. So that's another one. Um, okay, and then over on here, we could stick with the BL theme. We don't have to, but it's it's there. But BL anime reviews, of which there's some good ones out now. Um, the Asian dramas, and possibly the hetero dramas. Although, I have to do a quick plug. If you love Asian dramas, but you're not sure what you should watch, what to leave, and because some of it is just crap, go to, it's on, it, there's a link to it on the, um, my YouTube page over, um, on YouTube, the library YouTube page, but it is, she is one of my absolute most favoritist YouTubers, and I'm going to do a quick plug over on here, where is she, there you go, Avenue X, I, I, if you, some of you may have known that that's where I was going with this. Um, but I do want to do a quick plug for her because she is amazing. I will leave links in the description. I love her. She's fabulous. She knows what the hell she's talking about. She has never had an opinion where when I went to watch it that I didn't agree with her. Like, she's that good. So, Avenue X, and it's all one word. So, Avenue, capital A, Avenue, and then just the letter X, big X, and search that. You won't regret it. She's wonderful. I love her. Um, but she only does um, Asian drama reviews. So Chinese drama land is what she calls it. So yes, I very strongly recommend her. Um, also, I could go. we could go through um, manga reviews leaning towards BL manga and also fanfic reviews. Um, with the fanfic option... I started doing on SAF, the podcast, I started doing a um, how to write fanfic line um, series, and then I just found myself rambling. So I'm like, well, maybe rather instead of just rambling into the ether, maybe we do it on here and have it be more interactive. So that's one that I'm really leaning towards. It would still be hosted here on the library. It would just look very different. Um because it would be for SAF. So it would be a whole new, um, I already have it getting started, but SAF will have its own kind of Twitch uh, background and overlay and setting and all that. So SAF will be different than the library, obviously. Um, I think that's everything I necessarily wanted to talk about. Um, I thanked all the people who liked, subscribed, and followed. And uh, those of you who stayed with me, um, after last week's train wreck of me almost ugly crying into the, uh, into the microphone, that was a tough one. That was legit tough. Um, I don't know, I don't think the following chapters will be sad, although I, I say that now I've just shot myself in the foot. Um, but we'll see. Boy. Yeah, so let's get to it. I would like to get through these chapters 40 through 43. Get through them. And then it's going to be an early night. Yes. Yes. Um, oh, uh, there was one more thing that I wanted to mention. Uh, let me know in the comments um, if you think, I don't know if you've noticed, but I did do a, just to see how it went over, uh, a few weeks ago, I did a kind of like a sing song at the end or just kind of off on like just randomly and it went over really well then, but I was wondering if we should end streams with a sing song, but it's, I don't know. It's up to you. Let me know. Cause I'm going to end up doing it anyway. Yeah. I'm going to end up doing it anyway.
Okay. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, that was what it was. The last one. Last one. I remember now. Um, for those of you who follow and watch and listen to SAF, Sarah's Audio Fan Fictions, uh, if you're wondering where this past week's chapter was, just want to let you know, it is coming. It has all been recorded. I'm almost finished editing it. It's not terribly long. Um, it's just this weekend was Yui's birthday weekend. So not a lot of actual work got done. We spent a lot of time just he and I together and it was glorious. So, uh, please forgive me and you will get two chapters this week because we're staying on schedule with this bitch. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's go over. Now, sometimes on the other one, this works. I want to see if this works for you. Let me see. Oh. oh. Okay. So I, I actually got a chance to talk to the, um, what is it? Uh, the Beacon helpline. They are incredible. Beacon is the company who created both my microphone and my um, soundboard. And I got a chance to talk to them. I'm like, this is what I'm trying to do. I don't know how to do it. And uh, please help. And they're going, <laughs> the poor tech guy who actually helped create the system, he's going, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so um, let me just try fiddling with this a little bit. Now, at the same time, I do not want to have... Okay, it doesn't look like you're hearing much of anything. Okay, I don't want to have another issue where it's like, you can't hear me. So, I think that's pretty basic. So, I'm going to leave it at that. And if you can't hear it, that's fine. If you can and it's not too loud, that's excellent. But uh, we'll see how this goes. Oh my god, stop yawning, you bitch. Okay. <laughs> the Marleys were dead to begin with. Wrong story, but close. Um, yeah, no, that's, that's gonna be bugging me. That's gonna be bugging me. We're just gonna turn that off, just to be safe. Better safe than sorry. The Marleys were dead to begin with. No. Luan Chang was dead to begin with. Yes. All right. Chapter 40. Oh, crap. Just a sec. Sorry, I thought I was going to sneeze. Chapter 40. Luan Chang didn't lie to him. Lin Ching Yu sat quietly on the bed for a long time. For a while, he couldn't tell the difference between the dream and the real world. He looked blankly at his hand, as if he could still recall the feel of the boy's lower abdomen. Oh ho! <laughs> Sorry, that's not mine. That's not mine. Don't sue me for that. Don't don't sue me for that. Sue me, my son. Sue me, my son. But no matter how he tried, he couldn't remember the face of the person in his dream. He only remembered that that man was taller than the Luan Cheng he was familiar with. He was handsome, had a better sounding voice, and could easily carry him. And what else? His memory of the boy seemed to be covered with a veil. No matter how hard he looked, he could see... He could only see a vague outline. Hua Lu brought over hot water, waiting upon him as he washed his face. He asked, Did you dream of him last night? Hua Lu's eyes turned red again and she shook her head. Then Ching Yu slowly closed his palms. He came back. What did the young master say to Xiao Jin? Lin Ching Yu slowly closed his palms. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> the 
Then Xingyu smiled. He was the same as before, saying nothing serious. He just said some useless nonsense. He didn't even want to tell him his name. The bastard. He should be hanged and given a beating. But even if all he said was nonsense, the atmosphere of the dream had still been warm, making one feel nostalgic. It was a pity that he woke up from his dream. It was a pity that when he woke up from the dream, there was nothing left. Lin Ching Yu began to collect the things Luan Chang had left behind, selecting some that were to be selecting some that would be buried with him. There were too many things, so sorry, just a sec. Sorry, apologies. Let me just change something real quick. I need to change this real quick because my head's going, you didn't do this right. That's all good. Can I change this? I can. Okay, good. Okay. Okay, good. Yeah. Whew. Okay, that's better. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Well, that's good. It's all good. All my levels are good. Okay. Okay, okay. <clears throat> okay. Sorry. It is not productive to be thinking about something else and reading because it will not work. Trust me. Okay. <clears throat> Have you heard all the word from that said a completely new thing out of there? Hi! <laughs> Hi, Atkinson. Thank you so much for stopping by. We've just started Chapter 40. <laughs> And you're in luck. I'm, I don't plan on crying today, so that is good. <laughs> he didn't even want to tell him his name. The bastard. He should be hanged and beaten. But even if he, all he had said was nonsense, the atmosphere of the dream had still been warm, making one feel nostalgic. It was a pity that when he woke up from the dream, there was nothing left. Lin Jing Yu began to collect th the things Li Wan Chang had left behind, selecting some that would be buried with him. There were too many things, so he asked Hua Lu to sift through them first. He picked out the things that Li Wan Chang had used in the past year. Others that were too old could be disposed of at will. The clothes he'd worn, the jade crown he'd worn, the tableware he had used the throwing pot he had played with, the books he had read, and the birds. Oh, this is awesome. <laughs> During the first half of the year, Luan Chang's health hadn't been too bad. He collected a lot of strange things and also raised a, a, hua, mei and a, ah, a hua mei and a minor bird. Later, his health gradually deteriorated, and both the hua wei Hua Mei and Mina also died of illness. Luan Cheng personally arranged the funeral for the two birds, humming a cheerful tune to send them on their way. He said that the tune was called the Coffin Dance Meme and asked him if he wanted to learn it. He could teach him, and when he died, he could have the people from the Shangxi play it on the sona as they carried his coffin and sent him off. Okay, hold on one sec. <laughs> I'm getting... Ah, wrong one, wrong one. I'm getting this meme. <laughs> that is, he's such a troll, and I love him for it. What is it? Coffin dance meme. I'm just going to search it. It's one of my personal favorites. Uh, let's see here. I don't want the compilation. I want the real thing. Nope, that's an ad. 
No, that's also none. There's no sound to it. Okay. Come on! Coffin Dan's meme! <laughs> So you could just imagine ancient China. No, no, I'll teach you how to <laughs> say it. And I want that playing. <laughs> yeah, humming a cheerful tune to send them on their way. <laughs> He's such a troll. But awesome. <laughs> At the time, he didn't feel like paying attention to Lu Chang. He simply let him babble outrageous things in his ear and wouldn't even look at him. Fortunately, Lin Ching Yu has a good memory. And even if he hadn't paid attention at the time, he could still recall many details now. Luan Cheng liked fun things that didn't require him to move much. One day, on a whim, he said that he wanted to know how the people of Deyu sheared sheep. So he asked the steward to bring a sheep from one of the villages. He then ordered them to shear the sheep in front of him. If I were that sheep, I would have died from embarrassment, Luan Cheng said as he lay on the reclining chair. This reclining chair was Luan Cheng's favorite. He liked to lie on it to bask in the sun, swaying slowly, squinting just like a lazy cat. Surely the sheared sheep could have been sheared sooner? <laughs> Are you trying to tongue twist me? Because I tell you it shall not work. <laughs> Surely the sheared sheep should have been sheared sh sooner. Uh, eh? Okay. squinting just like a lazy cat. Lin Ching Yu followed Lu Wen Cheng's example and lay down on the rec reclining chair. How many sheep could a shearer shear if a shearer could shear sheep? <laughs> I tell you, I do the, um... Seriously. And that's a good one, actually. I like that. Seriously. You could use that. People think you have a lisp. He picked up a book that had been laying by the side and flipped through it. He remembered this book. A popular crime novel series. Luan Chang had circled the murderer's name on the third page, making it so that he couldn't read it any further. He wrote the word... Get lost in reply to Lu Wan Cheng and never revisited this book afterwards. He hadn't expected for Lu Wan Cheng to actually reply to him in the book. This man is the murderer. Get lost. In the end, I have unexpectedly spoiled Dr. Lin's reading experience. I'm sorry. Let me let me kowtow to you in an apology. Lin Ching Yu looked at a certain someone's scribbled handwriting, and the corners of his mouth curved up slightly. Luan Chang had always been like this, first making people speechless with anger, then quickly and sincerely apologizing, making it impossible to stay angry. At that time, Luan Chang was still a through-and-through -through hedonistic son of rich parents, eating and drinking all day long, lying in bed and refusing to get up. Since when did he start to become deep and shrewd, exhausting his thoughts and integrity and ingenuity? There was a slight, dull pain in his chest. Then Ching Yu closed the book. Still, he couldn't shed any tears. Maybe what he lost was something he should never have had. In the study, Lin Ching Yu found Luan Chang's still written. Oh. In the study, Lin Ching Yu found Luan Chang's will written a month ago. In his letter, he stated that the dowry left by his biological mother, Wen Shi, was 
was to be left to his widow, Lin Shi, in its entirety. Secondly, he hoped that his grandparents would convey to the empress that since he had already passed, the matter of their being husband and wife as part of the Xiangxi should stop here. He wished for Lin Xi to be able to return to the Lin residence, and from there on, their marriage should be irreverent, irre irrelevant. When Wen Xi got married, Wen Gugong prepared a very generous dowry. Twenty years later, it has hardly been touched. It was almost comparable to the Lin residence's entire family property. In addition, after Luan Cheng departed, Zhang Xishan al also discussed the accounts with Lin Jingyu. Since taking over the general affairs of the Hu Mansion, Zhang Xishan had been quietly transferring most of the Hu Mansion's fields, villages, and shops under Lin Qingyu's name. Luan Cheng said on their wedding night that when he died, he would let him take his inheritance back to the Lin residence. Luan Cheng hadn't lied to him. There was only one thing left, which Luan Cheng hadn't made up his mind on before he died. Xiao Jun. <clears throat> Xiao Jun, young Master Hu didn't know about the issue of the private salt business in Zhuzhou. In your opinion, what should we do now? Lin Qingyu originally wanted to use this matter to force Liang Shi to submit. At the same time, after making full use of Lu Nantao, he would use it to make her fall from power. It wouldn't do him any good if Lu Nantao really became a Gui Fei and gave birth to a prince. It was a pity that before he could use it, Mother and daughter were already to the point of dying. Within the span of a year, the Nan and Hu's mansion had experienced death, madness, and illness. Their situation was already a precarious, as precarious as a pile of eggs. Now he just had to wait for Nan and Hu to be unable to hold on any longer, either retiring and returning to his home down hometown, or falling ill and dying. There was no need for him to do anything. How boring. Extricate yourself from this matter completely. Let them continue to make trouble, Lin Qingyu said. Maybe it will be useful in the future. Zhang Xishan said respectfully, Yes. Young master, Huan Tong hurried into the room. The crown prince is here. Master Hu says that you should prepare to welcome him. Both the emperor and the empress expressed concern over Luan Chang's death. As the crown prince, Xiao Cheng could not neglect this matter. For him to come to the mansion to offer his condolences in person was considered giving Nan and Hu face. Lin Ching Yu knew that such a day would come. I see. I'll change my clothes and go. <clears throat> Nan and Hu, supported by Pan Shi, was waiting by the gate to receive the crown prince. Lin Ching Yu, along with the other clansmen, stood beside him. Nan and Hu thought that the crown prince would come with, would come with his side concubine when he came to pay his condolences. But unexpectedly, only the crown prince came. Xiao Cheng and Nan and Hu exchanged a few, gre few greetings, saying nothing more than polite civilities such as, I am sorry for your loss. I wanted to come earlier to the mansion to send my cousin off. However, official matters have kept me busy that is only today that I managed to get away. Asshole. The emperor was getting on in the years and since catching a cold during the hunting party, his majesty's health has not been as good as before. 
for the stability of the court, he had to let the crown prince assist him. Xiao Cheng even took over the Ministry of Revenue from Nan and Hu. It could be said that Xiao Cheng was like the sun at high noon. His power and influence was growing. Nan and Hu now only had one daughter left, so he couldn't help but ask after the side concubine's current situation. Xiao Cheng simply downplayed the matter. Liu Shi is feeling unwell, and it is inconvenient for her to leave the palace. I shall burn incense for my cousin on her behalf. Then Cheng Yu looked behind Xiao Cheng. The crown prince was away from the palace, but aside from the driver's group, he only brought two bodyguards with him. Given Xiao Cheng's suspiciousness, he would definitely not be so negligent about his own safety. He must have hidden a lot of his shadow guards in places where others couldn't see. Nan and Hu invited Xiao, invited Xiao Cheng in. When Xiao Cheng passed by Lin Qing Yu, the corner of his lips raised up into a smile that was yet not a smile. Lin Qing Yu was first to look away. Hello, ghost wandering, long time no see. How is you? It wasn't that he was afraid to lock eyes with Xiao Cheng. He was only worried that if he were to be hit with Xiao Cheng's grease, no one would be able to save his eyes. The group arrived at the morning hall. Okay, there's a page break. You, if you are interested in this story, you might want to catch up on last episode because uh, Li Wen Cheng is dead. <laughs> That's good. I'm glad you're doing good. It's been a while. Being busy with summer semester college work. Yes, I know. This is, I'm going, why is it so quiet? And then I thought, oh, time of year. Yes, yes. This can be craziness. The group? <laughs> oh, I ugly cried. It was, it was a lot. It was, it was quite a lot. Uh, actually, really kind of tragically. <laughs> there was, it was like, if I, if I think about it, I get teary. It was really sad. Like, you knew it was coming and you're like, oh, I didn't expect it to be this bad. But yeah. It's it's up on I don't know if it's still on Twitch, but it's definitely over on YouTube. So if you're interested, I I hardly got through it. It was not my best work. Uh, as the group arrived in the morning hall, as Lu Wan Chang's widow, Lin Ching Yu lit six incense sticks and handed them over to Xiao Cheng. Xiao Cheng took the incense sticks and said in a voice that only the two of them could hear. Little Ching Yu, you've lost weight. You know what? I'm not going to spoil it for you. Because I was expecting it to not be sad either. I was expecting to be able to laugh my way through it. Mm. Lin Ching Yu had a black expression on his face, as if he hadn't heard. Xiao Cheng looked at Luan Cheng's memorial tablet and laughed slowly. I still remember my cousin once saying that as long as he doesn't say it's over, nothing will end. But what about now? The person standing front of standing in front of little Ching Yu is I. Is this not considered an end? Then Ching Yu's heart moved. That's right. As long as that person doesn't say it's over, nothing ends. He cheered up and said, Your Highness may have heard rumors about me. Rumors? I married Luan Chang and the Nanan Hu's mansion met with disaster after disaster. It can be seen that the matter of having a male wife is not tolerated by heaven. Is little Ching Yu misunderstanding something? Xiao Cheng smiled evilly. 
How could we marry a male wife? What we want is only your face. Lin Ching Yu raised his eyelashes. Your Royal Highness, what do you want? There's no hurry. Xiao Cheng bowed slightly three times to Luan Chang's memorial tablet. He looked to be piously burning jostics while he said insulting words to the widow of the deceased. The most delicious prey can only come from a patient hunt. What an asshole. Then Ching Yu's eyelashes dropped back down. His hand reached into his sleeve as if to pull out something. A white flash flashed in front of Xiao Qing's eyes. Before he realized what had happened, a figure came out of nowhere and stood in front of him. Lin Ching Yu felt a sharp pain on his wrist, and when he locked, and he was knocked back a few steps, barely able to stabilize his body. He then found a long sword placed against his neck. A maid keeping watch beside the coffin screamed. Her mouth was quickly covered. The sudden change frightened everyone. They could only see a black-clothed young man in the morning hall, holding a long sword, radiating awe-inspiring killing intent, looking blankly at Lin Ching Yu. Compared to Lin Ching Yu, the young man was extremely ordinary, both in appearance and in figure. He was someone who could easily melt into a crowd. But at that moment, with the slightest move of his hand, the floor would be splattered with Lin Ching Yu's blood. Lin Ching Yu whispered, Shen Hai Xi? Surprise flitted in the young man's eyes. What's the matter? Xiao Chang said, displeased. What are you doing out suddenly appearing out of nowhere? The young man said succinctly, Then Xiao Zhen has a sharp object hidden in his sleeve. Everyone took a sharp breath. Assassinating the crown prince was a serious crime that was punishable with death for the entire family and confiscation of all their property. Oh, Xiao Chang narrowed his eyes dangerously. Lin Xiao Chen wants to do something stupid in front of his husband's coffin. Lin Jing Yu said calmly, Shadow Guard Darren must under... Has misunderstood. He took out what was hidden in his sleeve, which turned out to be nothing but a bayou. Bayou. This is something left by young Master Hu. After young Master Hu departed, I started to carry it around with me, developing the habit of fiddling with it from time to time. Unexpectedly, it caused such a misunderstanding. I hope His Royal Highness can pardon me. Xiao Chang scrutinized Lin Ching Yu. All the other people didn't dare to breathe too loudly until Xiao Chang said, Withdraw. The young man immediately put away his sword. He lowered his eyes and said, The subordinate deserves death. After this small disturbance, Xiao Chang didn't stay long. Lin Ching Yu put the bio put the bio along with the other funeral objects to let it accompany Luan Chang in his internal sleep. Otherwise, Luan Chang might have nothing to fiddle with in the other world. After the wake was after the wake was the burial. The ancestral tomb of the Lu family was in Luan, Linan, and Lu Bai Shou rushed to the capital with his ho ah. After the wake was the burial. The ancestral tomb of the Lu family was in Linan, and Lu Bai Shou rushed to the capital from his hometown in order to return Lu Wan Chang, this fallen leaf, back to his roots. As his widow, Lin Ching Yu would go with Lu Bai Shan, Bai Shou, to send Lu Wan Chang off on his final journey. The new year was approaching and Lin Ching Yu planned to leave for the South after the New Year's. On New Year's Eve, Nan and Hu's mansion did not post spring festival couplets. They didn't set off any firecrackers, and they were not allowed to visit relatives and friends. 
Although Lin Qingyu missed his parents and younger brother, in order to not bring down criticism upon them, he still chose to stay in the Hu Mansion for the new year. He gave the servants of the Blue Inn Pavilion a holiday and spent the new year with Huan Tong. Huan Tong cooked them a pot of dumplings, and while the master and servant were eating, they welcomed a guest. He Ji was alone in the capital, and it was inevitable for him to feel particularly lonely during times when families should get together. He first went to the Lin residence, where Mother Lin gave him a meal and said that if he had nothing to do, he could go to the Nen and Hu mansion for a visit. So, Hu Ji came and brought along a few of Mother Lin's pastries. Lin Ching Yu thanked him and asked, Is Mother well? He Ji said, Shenang is all right. I am more worried about Xiao Jin and Pan, and Pan Yan Darren, who is far away in Yang Liang. Lin Ching Yu frowned. It has been a long time since the news came to the capital from Yang Liang. New information has been slow in coming. The battles in the northwest continued unceasingly. General Gu's fate was uncertain, and no one knew when his father would return. When He Ji heard that Lin Qing Yu was going south, he said worriedly, The epidemic is raging in the south. Xiao Jin must be careful. Lin Qing Yu nodded and said, Yes. He Ji stayed with them for a while and then got up to say goodbye. Lin Qing Yu saw him out. When he looked up, he saw the sky ablaze with light, the galaxy twinkling down at them. The night, the year ended. That night, the year ended, and tomorrow, the new year would come. After that night, the soul of the boy surnamed Jang never entered his dreams again. Ooh, let's go. Mm-mm-mm. Oh. <clears throat> I have to remember to hydrate. Papa Mutt's going to be so mad. I always forget to hydrate. I'm not good at remembering. I leave it for chapters. I shouldn't do that. <laughs> eh? eh? <clears throat> I thought I had something to say, but now I can't remember. Oh, I picked up some... No, I'll, I'll leave it. <clears throat> Okay, let me just yawn real quick and get it out of my system. <sighs> okay. Uh, if there are ever any terms that you're not sure what they mean, let me know in the chat or in the comment or in the comments, and uh, I can explain. Explain. Sometimes it's hard to, it's irritating to Google in the middle of it. I know, or when you're listening to it, you're like, I don't know what they're talking about. I get it. For instance, uh, we mentioned it at the very beginning, but a guife is like a high end concubine. Like if they go in ranking, like in order of ranking, like, you know, leader, commander, general, sergeant, soldier, that kind of thing. So, Goyfe is right underneath the the legal wife. So a, a Goyfe. So that's when they were talking about um, Lu Nan Tao becoming a Goyfe. He's like, well, no, I don't want her to get that high. <laughs> I don't want her to get any kind of prestige. So yeah, so that's what that was talking about. I don't know if there were any others that... Oops, I keep moving this one. I don't mean to. Yeah, I... I keep meaning to widen the chat and it doesn't work. <laughs> so far I've got Robbie Williams' Angel stuck in my head. That could be our song for today. I don't know. So far. That's what I got. Okay. <clears throat> Chapter 41. Gu Fu Joe's. Okay. Fu, yeah, Fu, that's right. Gu Fu Zhou's 
residual poison has been cleared, and he can recover only by resting. Gu Fujo. Is that the general? General Gu, right? I think. I think. I think. I'm not sure. I think. Okay. <gasps> the second husband was a general. Okay, we're in this. We're in this. We're here. We saw the Fortish Anatomy. We got you. Oh, god damn. <sighs> Chapter 41. Gufu Joe's residual poison has been cleared, and he can recover only by resting. <clears throat> On the third day of the new year, Lin Qing Yu took Huat Huan Tong and a few guards and sailed south with Lu Bai Shou. From the capital to Linan from the capital to Linan by water, it would take a month at best. He would probably have to spend the Lantern Festival on the road. Even though this trip was to deliver the coffin, Lin Qing Yu wasn't about to treat himself badly. He rented two large two story boats, one of which was was specially used to carry Lu Wencheng's coffin. It was the Chinese New Year the time for visiting relatives and friends. There were numerous boats coming and going at the capital's ferry port. They were surrounded by the din of people's voices. Lin Qing Yu helped Huan Tong onto the boat. Huan Tong looked at the place where the river met the sky and said with emotion, A few years ago, young master left the capital to travel for his studies. You also traveled by water for a long time. Now it's riding boats. Now it's riding boats that I'm most afraid of. They were in the same ferry with the same people. It was only the mood that had changed. Only then did Lin Qing Yu remember that Huan Tong was prone to getting seasick. How about you go to the How about you go back to the Lin residence? How could that be? Huan Tong said firmly. Wherever the young master goes, I will follow. The man carried the coffin onto the boat. Oh, the men carried the coffin onto the boat. Before his death, Luan Chang would never stand if he could sit, would never sit if he could lie down. He only went out a handful of times a year, feeling exhausted whenever he traveled far by boat or carriage. Lu Wan Chang once said he would go looking for punishment only after he's gone mad. Who knew that even after death, he would still need to go on such a bumpy journey with him? After everything was ready, the boatman raised the anchor and the boat started off. The tide receded and the river surface was calm and still. Fog covered the surface and the sun shone down on the water. Half the river rustled and half the river turned rosy. Isn't the river scenery quite nice? Then Ching Yu wiped Luan Chang's memorial tablet and sat down. If you manage to come back, don't be so lazy in the future and go out for a walk once in a while. Oh, you're killing me. Oh, I was no, I wasn't expecting that. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. Lin Jing Yu wanted to say something else, but when he saw the words Lu Wan Cheng's tomb on the tablet, he kept feeling out of sorts. Ever since he saw that strangely dressed boy in his dream, he kept having the sense of discordance towards Lu Wan Cheng's coffin. Lu Wan Cheng was already dead, but that person might not be. Going all the way south by boat, the surrounding scenery was constantly changing, from the plains of the north to the mountains of the south. A few days later, they made a brief stop in Shenyang. They made a brief stop at Shenyang Ferry. The epidemic was raging in Hongzhou, Hongzhou, and their boats would not be able to make their appointed stop there and so they had to replenish supplies in Xiangyang, which was a day's journey by boat from Hongzhou. 
Liu Baisho asked Nan Ching Yu if he wanted to go ashore. I heard that Shen Yang's tea cakes are a must. I heard that y Shen Yang's tea cakes are a must. Would Lin Xiaojin want to try some? Nan Ching Yu was not very interested and said, No, I'll be waiting for you on the boat. Then I'll buy some and bring some back for you, Liu Baisho said. Just treat it as a return gift for the Hanyang, Hanyang Mohu, Hanyang Mohu. Lin Qing, Lin Qing Yu and Luan Chang had invited him to eat this dish when he went to the capital before the visit to his relatives. Look at this mouth of mine. Liu Bai Shou was aware that he had made a slip of the tongue. He shouldn't have brought this up in front of Lin Qing Yu. The deceased was already gone, and reminiscing about the past will only add to the sadness, especially in the presence of the deceased's wife. Fortunately, Lin Qing Yu didn't have any special reaction. Then I'll trouble the sixth young master to buy an extra order, so that Wan Cheng can also have a taste. Huan Tong was so seasick that he wanted to go down and take it easy for a bit. Lin Qing Yu said, That's perfect. Go into the, go into the city and look for a Xiong Xi. Have the store make a memorial tablet. It doesn't need to be anything exquisite. Something usable will suffice. Huan Tong thought that the young master was going to set up an extra memorial tablet for young master Hu. He asked, Should I have them engrave the same words on the tablet? No, just engrave. Lin Qing Yu pondered, pondered, and pondered again. Engrave Jiang Dixiong. Jiang. Jiang. Da Jiang. Engrave Jiang De Jiang's tomb on it. Huan Tong was puzzled. Who's Jiang De Jiang? Lin Qing Yu said indifferently, A bastard. You don't fool in anyone. This is, oh goodness, what is it? What is that? Oh, Sundari? Is that, is this, is one where on the outside he's, he pretends to be all prickly, but really he's a soft little marshmallow, soft poisonous marshmallow. <laughs> oh my goodness, I love lynching you. We need, I need more, I'm going to look that up. I want to find more lynching you and Married Thrice a fan art, because there isn't near enough. In fact, I haven't found any, but there isn't near enough. There needs to be more. Lin Jing Yu, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, I love them so much. So much loves them. The Liu family's boat stopped in Xianyang for half a day. They passed through Hongzhou and continued south. When they were just a few days away from Lenan, Liu Baishou and Huan Tong fell ill, one after another. The symptoms of the two were exactly the same. Oh my god, I'm getting PTSD from this. Huh. Uh, what is it? Uh, what is it? Oh. Hmm. Warning. The following in picks, in picks, ah. Uh, the following depicts, in graphic detail, signs and symptoms and happenings of an epidemic. As we've just been through one, if you are uncomfortable with, with such things, please ignore for the next few chapters, because though Lin Qing Yu does make this epidemic his bitch, it is a bit um, triggering for some people. <sighs> Viewer and listener discretion is advised. <clears throat> oh, no, wait. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. <laughs> I can be a professional. What? The symptoms of the two are exactly the same. First, a persistent high fever, followed by vomiting and abdominal pain. Then blisters began to appear on the body soon after. One of their boatmen was a refugee from Hongju. With a single glance, 
he could tell that the two were infected with the epidemic. Jinang is only a day or two away from Hongju. There he goes. Many of the city, many in the city are those who have fled from Hongzhou. Although the government checks each one before they're allowed into the city, it is inevitable that some of those infected will still make it through. I'm afraid that these two y masters caught the disease in Jiangyang. The bowman covered his nose with his hands and kept a distance from the two of them. Please do not take offense, my lord, but if you have this kind of disease, you can only resign yourself to fate. If you are unlucky, even the emperor cannot help you. In the cabin, Liu Baisho and Huan Tong were delirious from the fever. After only a day of the disease, they could no longer think clearly. The blisters had spread from their bodies up to their necks. Then Ching Yu wanted to examine the two, but the boatman quickly stopped him. My lord, you mustn't. This disease is contagious. Then Ching Yu opened the medical box that Li Wan Chang gave him and said, All of you just need to keep away. Hu Qi had reminded Lin Ching Yu about the epidemic, and Lin Ching Yu had already made preparations for it. However, he just hadn't thought that the epidemic would come so quickly and so urgently. He covered his mouth and nose with cotton gauze and told the rest of the crew to do the same. At the next ferry stop, he had the others disembark to buy medic medicinal materials for him, while he stayed on the boat to take care of the sick. Huan Tong had just finished a round of vomiting and was in a rare state of wakefulness. Seeing that Lin Ching Yu was going to give him an injection, he hurriedly said, Young master, don't come in here! Lin Ching Yu held his shoulders to prevent him from moving and asked, Do you trust me? Huan Tong nodded, eyes red. Young master is the best doctor in the world. Except for father and mother, Lin Ching Yu said. I will try some medicines on you. Don't be afraid. They are all mild medicines. Even if they are ineffective, they will not hurt your body. The young master can use whatever he want. I believe in young master. Then Ching Yu applied medicinal power. Then Ching Yu applied medicinal powder to the two of them. He personally dispensed and decocted them their own medicines. He didn't. He didn't have 100% certainty. He could only take things one step at a time, increasing or decreasing medication based on their situation. When the epidemic broke out last year, he wrote a letter to his teacher. In his return, Lin Qingyu's master wrote down a lot of his views regarding the epidemic. From them, Lin Qingyu got a lot of inspiration and it was quite useful in formulating the medicine. Under his careful care, within a few days, Huan Tong and Lu Bai Shou's fever subsided. The blisters on their bodies burst and scabbed over one after the other, and there was no sign of the blisters recurring. The two of them stayed in bed for a couple more days, after which they seemed to have made a complete recovery. They gained a lot of scars on their bodies, but fortunately, it wouldn't, didn't wound their faces. Liu Baisho was filled with gratitude towards Lin Qingyu, and he immediately called him his second parent. Lin Qingyu said, Forget about claiming me as a second parent. If possible, may I ask Sixth, sixth Young Master to find someone to send a letter back to the capital for me? Give it to Imperial Physician Hu, Hu Ji. He had written down in the letter all the prescriptions he had used on the two of them, hoping to help the imperial physician's office. With such a delay, they could only celebrate this year's lantern, lantern festival on the bo uh. With such a delay, they could only celebrate this year's lantern festival aboard a boat. The boatman parked the boat at the ferry crossing by the city gate 
and Ninching Yu climbed up the second floor. Atop the river's waves, they could vaguely see the fiery trees and silver flowers of the city. The fireworks. It was dazzling, reminding him of the smile in the eyes of that person whenever he looked at him. Young master, hurry! Look! Lin Ching Yu looked in the direction Hua Tong was pointing and saw lotus lanterns floating downstream from the city, floating on the river like stars. Lin Ching Yu watched for a while and said, Do we still have one? On the other side, Lu Bao Shou woke up after a nap. Seeing neither servant nor master of the Lin family, he went on deck to look for them. Amidst the frosty moonlight, a man in white was seated facing the wind, his long hair tied with silk fluttering like ink, his clothes as pristine as snow. His image, as he raised his face to drink the wine, was far more beautiful than the moon. For a while, Lu Bai Shou thought he had seen an immortal. It was only when the boatman, seeing him in a daze, called out loud, My lord, that he came back to his senses. Dr. L Dr. Lin. Lin Jing Yu's hand holding the wine cup paused. He suddenly got up and looked back. The moment he saw Lu Bai Shou, the light in his eyes quickly dimmed. Lu Bai Shou was a little embarrassed and at a loss. Dr. Lin? Ever since he had learned of Lin Ching Yu's medical skills, Liu Bai Shou had that had felt felt that the title doctor was more suitable for him than Xiao Jin. They had truly wasted talent the day Lin Ching Yu married into the Hu Mansion as part of this young Xi. Lin Ching Yu cal calmed down and said lightly, "It's nothing." On the night of this year's Lantern Festival, the moon and the lanterns were the same as before. A third of his 100-day promise to that man had passed. When they arrived in Lin'an, Lu Bai Shou took care of the many matters of the, of the burial, so Lin Ching Yu needn't, con needn't concern himself about it. Once the Lu family's branch family learned that their family's male wife had arrived, they all wanted to come see, creating quite the fuss. It was a pity that Lin Ching Yu didn't give them the chance. He didn't even enter the Lu family's ancestral home, staying instead at an inn outside. He didn't make an appearance until the day of Luan Chang's burial. He looked on emotionlessly as Luan Chang's coffin was buried in the Lu family ancestral tomb. The members of the branch family were crying so hard, some of them had never even seen Luan Chang's face. Seeing him so calm, it led to a lot of people gossiping behind his back as though him not showing the littlest bit of sadness confirmed the rumors that he was a jinx upon his husband's family. However, the one being buried was Lu Wan Cheng. What did it have to do with the one that... What did it have to do with the one surnamed Jang? The person surnamed Jang simply borrowed this body for a year. Lin Ching Yu personally worked working so hard to look after his funeral arrangements for so long could already be regarded as him repaying the debt for this person, surnamed Zheng. During the second month, Lin Ching Yu finally returned to the capital. Luan Cheng's funeral had come to an end. It was time for him to return to the Nan and Hu's mansion to prepare for the division of the property and the separation from the family. As soon as Lin Ching Yu arrived at the Nan and Hu mansion, Hu Ji immediately came looking for him, excitedly telling him two pieces of good news. First, his prescription for the epidemic was indeed miraculously effective. 
After a little improvement by the Imperial Medical Office, it was distributed to all 19 states of the... Di it's not states, is it? Provinces. Prefectures. Just a sec. That's one thing that really bugs me about the American... Just a sec. Hmm. Yes. Let me just check the secondary one just to be sure. I see. Okay. Hi. Mm. Okay. Hi, hi. There's both. So let me see here. In current China, there's 34 provinces and 339 prefectures. That makes more sense. Okay. Okay. So let's see here. They're saying here it's an epidemic. They're calling it states. So I'm going to go with provinces on this one. Wait, let me just make sure they don't actually have. Sorry, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, don't, don't, don't worry, I'm just, okay. Hi. Hmm. Provinces. Okay. Yeah, no, no states. I, I always think that that's just a U.S. thing. I don't know off the top of my head, this could just be me be, being ignorant, but off the top of my head, I cannot think of... Uh, any other countries that use states? Provinces and prefectures, that's what I know of. Hmm. Oh, well. Okay. I'm going to change that shit right there. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> that was a weird interlude. That's bugging me. It was distributed to all 19 provinces of the Dayu. Dayu. Damn it. Second in the northwest border, General... Second, in the northwest border, General Gu, Gu, Fu, Gu Fuzhou, suddenly returned from the verge of death, <laughs> persisting for two more days. During these two days, Lin Panyan finally found a way to dispel this strange poison from Xie Xia. Now the resident... Now the residual poison has been cleared from Gufu Zhou's body. All he needed now was to rest in order to completely recover. I... I heard that after General Gu woke up, he saw the Pan Yan and claimed him as a second parent, insisting that he is his adoptive father. The Pan Yan refused many times, but it was no use. He could only toughen his scalp and accept him as an adopted son, Huji said with a smile. In this way, isn't Xiaojia now General Gu's sworn brother? Sworn brother? For some reason, Lin Qingyu felt a subtle sense of familiarity in his heart. In any case, both these things truly were things to be celebrated. After a long time, he now finally breathed a sigh of relief. He said, Since General Gu is safe and sound, shouldn't it be time for my father to return to the capital? It should be, Hood Ji said, beaming. Then, Xiaojin, did you know? When the emperor heard that the one who came up with the cure for the epidemic is the son of Lin Panyan 
and the wife of young Master Hu. He made it be known that he wished to invite you to the palace to meet with him. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> oh my god, that was embarrassing. That was, that was very poorly done. Da, da, da. What is what is behind? I think it's Wang Ji and Wu Jin. Is it? It is. <laughs> I just wanted to see what my my background was. It changes every every five to ten minutes or so. Okay, just a sec. Hmm? There we go. It's only been an hour and 17 minutes or so, but oh, it's only a, okay. Okay. I'm going to power through this chapter in the next, because I'm CP, and uh, we're going to get, because I want to go spend some more uh, time with Yui this is for his birthday. Just a sec. Oh, there it is. Okay. Chapter 42. <clears throat> oh no. <laughs> I'm so looking forward to this. I'm expecting comedy. Do not let me down. <clears throat> also, does anyone else find it really freaking weird that his surname is Jang? Uh, I'm not a personally, I'm not a huge fan of the Jangs. Not a fan. So I really like Luan Chang, but then he's a Jang and I don't know how to deal with this. <laughs> I mean, a crisis. <clears throat> Chapter 42. It's not like what a serious general would say. Yeah, he's not serious. He felt a bitch. A few days later, sure enough, summons from the emperor came from the palace, ordering Lin Ching Yu to come to the palace to see him. With his relationship to the empress, Lin Ching Yu could be considered as being related to the emperor. However, having no official position this time, he could only enter the palace as a commoner. Hua Lu deliberately chose a dark-colored robe. On Lin Ching Yu, it created an image as clear and elegant as the sky after the rain. Lin Ching Yu remembered the first time he entered the palace to thank the empress. Before he left to be he, before he left for the palace, Jang had been very reluctant. When asked why, what did Jang say? I'm afraid that greaseball of a prince might take a fancy to you. Oh, aside from the crown prince, you've got to watch out for the emperor, too. Old man likes young and beautiful. Jang's words regarding Xiao Cheng had already proved, po proved prophetic. Was he also going to be right about the emperor? Lin Ching Yu said, I won't be wearing this one. Bring me that purple Shen Yi. Hua Lu was surprised. Is Xiao Zhen referring to the one made last year? She remembered that Xiao Zhen wasn't fond of purple. At that time, the young master said that this color was so tacky that it hurt his eyes. And so she quickly placed it on the bottom of the box. Hmm. But Xiao Zhen is still within the period of mourning. It would be better to dress plainly. It's no matter. Lin Ching Yu put on the purple clothes. However, just looking at his figure and face, he was still extremely eye-catching. It was the most that he could do. There was also the risk of being punished if he were to behave improperly before his majesty. Then Ching Yu entered the palace with the eunuch who had come to pick him up from the mansion. He arrived at Qingjiang. He arrived at uh, he arrived at Qingjiang Palace on foot. The emperor is currently discussing matters with the crown prince. The head eunuch of the Qingjiang <sighs> Qingjiang Palace said, "Lin Xiaojin, please wait here for a moment." The eunuch in charge of the administrative affairs of Qingjiang Palace was named Xu Ying. He was served. He has served the emperor for many years, 
and even the empress had to give him some face. Lin Qingyu nodded and said, Thank you for your trouble, Gong Gong. Xu Yang was a veteran in the palace. There were 3,000 beauties in the harem. Mm, sorry. Page break. Xu Yang was a veteran in the palace. There were 3,000 beauties in the harem, and he has never seen a beauty that he ha and there has never been a beauty that he hasn't seen. But he was still stunned the first time he saw the newly widowed Lin Xiaojun. Male homosexuality was in vogue in the Deu, and there were several stylish and attractive male attendants within the, within the emperor's own harem. However, they were obviously no match for Lin Xiaojun. It was simply that the emperor had good taste and preferred light-faced beauties, like lotuses in clear water. Lin Xiaojun dressed Lin Xiaojun dressed so tackily. If it weren't for his face, how could he ever be worth the admiration of anyone? Though Though told to wait a moment, Lin Qingyu waited for more than half an hour until oh I'd be pissed until finally Xiao Cheng came out. When Xiao Cheng saw Lin Qingyu, a hint of surprise flashed in his eyes. Why are you here? Xu Yang explained. Answering his highness, Lin Xiaojin has performed a meteoric. What is this word? Meteorious. Meteorious? Ayo. Yeah. Lin Xiaojin has performed a meteorous deed for formulating, for formulating the prescription for this cure of the epidemic. The emperor will personally be rewarding him for his achievement. Oh? Xiao Cheng raised one eyebrow and walked half a circle around Lin Qingyu. Gu o. Oh. Yeah. We also thought you had a, nothing but a pretty face. I didn't expect you to have such a talent. As expected of the one we have taken a fancy to. Xiao Cheng le Yeah, Xiao Cheng leaned in close to Lin Qingyu's ear, the sound of the tail end of his words turning up. Lin Qingyu? Lin Qingyu took a half step back, successfully escaping Xiao Cheng's breath. I hope his highness knows to conduct himself with dignity in front of Qinjiang Palace. Xiao Cheng gave a vague smile. I am merely greeting my younger cousin. How am I not conducting myself with dignity? Xu Yang saw that the atmosphere between the two wasn't right. With a smile on his face, he broke the stalemate, saying, His highness may have heard. Lin Panyan has accepted General Gu as his adopted son. Lin Xiaojun is very fortunate indeed to have General Gu as an adoptive brother. As expected of a slick and experienced person of the palace, with just a few casual words, he had managed to resolve the deadlock. Gu Fuzhou had 300,000 troops in his grasp. He was the head of the military and enjoyed great prestige within the army. Zhang once said that before Xiao Cheng fell completely in love with Sen Nu- Whoa. Why? The fuck? Okay, what? Zhang once said that before Xiao Cheng, the asshole prince, fell completely in love with Shen Huaixi, his guard. What? The thing he valued most was his position as crown prince. So long as Xiao Cheng still had brains, 
he wasn't going to embarrass Gu Fu Zhou over a stand-in. <gasps> really? Wait. Hey, wait. Wait, my wheels are turning. Wait. Does this mean... If the crown prince falls in love with his head guard, does that not mean that the novel that they were in, this whole thing, is already a BL? Am I? Am I? Anyone else? Am I getting that right? Is that? Huh? I think so. I don't know. I don't know. It's curious. It's very curious. Very, very curious. Oh, that's interesting. That's so interesting. I that's the first I have heard of that. I knew that he the I knew that Xiao Chang had the thing for the girl who became the princess and was married to the king of the north. I know that one. Oh, but this is new. I don't know. Someone keep track of all these plot holes. I don't know if they're plot holes, but so far. Sure enough, Xiao Chang restrained the look he directed at Lin Ching Yu. Gu Fu Zhu. Xiao Chang licked the tip of, tip of his teeth, his words laced with deeper meaning. The Lin family is quite capable when it comes to finding backers for themselves. It's a pity that this time may be different. Even if it is Gu Fu Zhu, he may not prove dependable. Having said so, Xiao Cheng left. A little eunuch walked out of the Ch oh, Ching Cheng Palace and said, Lin Xiao Zhen, please. The emperor was quite... I'm oh, sorry. The emperor was past 40. His health was sometimes good and sometimes bad. Having read reports for half a day and discussed matters with the crown prince for a couple of hours, he was long past the point where he could perform as well as he wanted. However, he still wanted to see this Lin Shi, who came up with a cure for the epidemic. Generally speaking, Lin Shi's contribution could be compared to Gu Fu Zhou. One secured safety within and the other safety from without. Oh, the perfect pair. The emperor rubbed his forehead warily. He saw a young man in purple walk in and kneel down in front of him. Your subject, Lin Jing... Your subject, Lin Jing Yu, is here to see your majesty. Oh no, I was right the first time. Your subject, Lin Jing Yu, is here to see your majesty. Oh, where do we get this one? Rise. Lin Ching Yu stood up. His eyes were lowered and he stood in the dim light, as if he didn't dare to look directly at the emperor. As soon as the emperor saw his clothes, he didn't bother looking at him seriously. I heard from the Imperial Medical Office that you were the one who came up with the cure for the epidemic. Lin Ching Yu lowered his eyes and said, Yes but this subject was only able to come up with the prescription in a short period of time with the guidance of his teacher. The emperor also thought... Li the emperor also thought Lin Ching Yu too young. Experience and qualifications were important for medical practitioners. Where is your teacher now? My teacher travels all over the world. He lives in no fixed place, and his current whereabouts are uncertain. This subject also doesn't know where he is. Your teacher seems to be an otherworldly master. Of course, you yourself are equally outstanding, the emperor said. Your father just pulled General Gu back from the brink of death for me, and you saved my countless subjects. Sure enough, with a father... With a father as a tiger, the son cannot be a dog. Well, that's a good line. It's untrue, but it's a good line. 
The emperor bestows undue praise, and this subject feels uneasy. The emperor didn't want to waste too much time on Lin Qingyu. You have made great contributions to ending this pandemic. Tell me, what reward would you like? Lin Qingyu's eyes sparkled, and he said, This subject wishes to be able to walk freely in the Imperial Medical Office, to work with the world's most famous doctors, to read all the medical books and make a modest contribution to His Majesty's continued glory. Oh? The Emperor's tone as he said that, oh, was somewhat similar to Xiao Cheng's. I didn't expect you to have such an aspiration. N Lin Qing Yu didn't want an official position or money. He only wanted the qualification to join the Imperial Medical Office. This made the Emperor regard him with a little bit more respect. You are a talented person but you have already married a man as a male wife. It would be inconvenient for you now to uncover your head and show your face. Then Ching Yu knelt down once again. Young Master Hu has passed away, and this subject has done his duty as his wife. I hope His Majesty may reconsider. The marriage between you and Lu Wencheng was originally requested by the Empress. The Empress also mentioned this a few days ago. After all, a male wife violates the ancestral system of the Nan and Hu's mansion. A male wife violates the ancestral system, and the Nan and Hu's mansion has met repeated calamity because of it. What the Empress wishes is to not let is to let you return to the Lin residence. The Emperor thought for a moment and said, Forget it. One does not question the origins of a hero. I grant you the post of a seventh grade doctor. You can now walk freely in the Imperial Medical Office. Then Ching Yu bowed and thanked him. Your servant thanks the emperor for his kindness. Lin Ching Yu walked out of the Qing Jing Palace, suddenly wanting to laugh. He hadn't taken the Imperial Medical Office's exam last year, but he hadn't needed to wait another three years, having achieved his former ambition this way. It was somewhat laughable. It was somewhat laughably easy. Since Lu Wencheng's death, his luck seemed to have taken a turn. He had wealth and riches. He had regained his freedom. For some inexplicable reason, he now also had a powerful and influential adoptive brother. And finally, he has joined the Imperial Medical Office, which he has been aspiring to for a long time. Was it? Was that person's soul blessing him from somewhere? Congratulations to... Oh, this is so cool. Congratulations to Imperial Physician Lin, Xu Yang said with a smile. In the future, our servants will be under Imperial Physician Lin's care. Lin Ching Yu smiled. Eunuch Yu is too, is being polite. It is me who is in need of your care. With an in, with an in into the palace, his hand could finally reach the eastern palace. Lin Ching Yu followed the eunuch who was leading the way out of the palace and happened to meet Hu Ji, who was about to return to the office after performing his duties. The two walked out together. He Ji heard that Lin Ching Yu had been promoted to a doctor of the seventh grade and said with joy, Then Imperial Physician Lin and I will be colleagues in the future. It appears so. By the way, has Imperial Physician Lin heard about this amusing thing regarding General Gu? 
Then Ching Yu saw that Hu Ji's expression was a little weird. He seemed to want to laugh, but felt that he shouldn't. Then Ching Yu asked, What? I just met Xiao, Sh Xiao Songji, who I was... who was... Uh, who serves tea in Xinjing, Qin Jiang Palace. It was he who told me about this amusing matter. He Ji what? Uh, fucking hell. He Ji wondered. It can't quite be considered simply amusing. His Majesty is worried about this. He Ji had been. He Ji. He Ji had been promoted to concubine Chen and the Crown Prince. He now held a certain position within the Imperial Hospital. In terms of qualifications, he could already diagnose and treat the Empress and the Imperial concubines. But he was still the same as before, with no air of haughtiness about him at all. Whether it was the eunuchs, the palace maids, the guards, or the wet nurses, as long as someone seeks medical treatment, he will try his best to cure them. In the palace, the life of a servant was of little value. He Ji's only intention was to cure sickness and save patients. But along the way, he has inadvertently won over the hearts of many in the palace's residence. Therefore, he was very popular in the palace, and even the people around the emperor were willing to reveal to him information that wasn't considered confidential. If the word... Amusing could be used to describe it. It definitely wasn't anything important. It was probably a joke some brainless concubine in the harem competing for favor made. Lin Ching Yu didn't care much and asked casually, What is it? Today, the deputy general of the Jiangxi army, General Zhao, Zhao Wingmei, Ming Wei's, Zhao Mingwei's report was sent to the emperor's desk. The Jiangxi army, the Deyu's army that was fighting against Xie Xia in Yongliang, according, according to the Deyu's military law, the troops weren't allowed to make any private contact with the outside world, even when the situation was serious. They couldn't even write to their families lest any of the military plans be leaked to the enemies. Violators, regardless of their status, would be dealt with according to military law. It could be said that the only connection between Yang Liang and the capital were the reports delivered to Qing Chang Palace. If Lin Qing Yu wanted to know news about his father, he could only rely on Hu Ji to ask the eunuchs of the Qing Chang Palace. Has something unforeseen happened in Yang Liang? Hu Ji knew that Lin Qing Yu was worried what was worried about, and said, Imperial Physician Lin, don't worry. I, uh, the Jiangxi army under the leadership of General Gu defeated the Xingxia army not too long ago. Han Yan, Darren, Darren, is most assuredly safe. General Zhao's report was a request to impeach General Gu. General Zhao has followed Gu Fuzhou for many years. He was loyal and devoted to him. His respect for him as high as a mountain. Why would he suddenly request for his impeachment? Especially just after a great victory. On what grounds is he requesting General Gu's impeachment? At this, Hu Ji couldn't restrain a smile. He said that General Gu loves to dawdle in bed too much, that getting him to discuss military matters in the morning is nothing short of a disaster. What's that? In the end, the generals had to discuss important military affairs in front of his bed. General Gu also hated it when the discussions dragged on for too long. He told them to wash and go to bed early saying that only in this way can they replenish their energies. Not long ago, 
The enemy launched a surprise attack late in the evening, and as the soldiers were approaching the city, General Gu, half asleep and dazed, with his quilt wrapped around him, climbed atop the city wall and commanded the army to defend the city. Although under his leadership our army finally won a great victory, it was truly offensive to the eyes. Lin Ching Yu what are all what are all these? What did the Emperor say? His Majesty has yet to make an imperial judgment. Moreover, General Gu himself has also sent in a report. He said that due to his poisoning and his close brush with death, he has grown disillusioned by the mortal world, that his body and mind were no longer as they were before and that he can no longer fight the enemy at the front lines for the Deyu. To let him continue commanding... To let, him com to let him continue to command the three armies would at best delay military planning and, at worst, endanger the people. He is now a thirty-year-old elder, and he hopes not to return his integrity in the later years. He hopes that the Emperor will look kindly upon his years of hard work and allow him to return to the capital to lead the life of an idle rich man. The more Huji said, the more inconceivable he found everything to be. Of course, these weren't the original words written by, the, by Gu Fu Zhou in the report. Zhao Xiongzi of... Ching Cheng Palace added his personal style when he recounted it to Hu Ji, but the general meaning was not wrong. General Gu also recommended General Zhao to take over the post of general of the Jiangxi army. He repeatedly begged the emperor to allow him to return to the capital immediately. Gu Fu Zhou joined the army at the age of 14, and then Ching Yu was only four years old when he became famous at the age of 16. It could be said that Lin Ching Yu grew up listening to Gu Fu Zhou's deeds. Although he had entered the medical field, when he was young, he too yearned to go to the battlefield to chop down their enemies and win glory. There weren't many people who managed to earn his admiration and respect. Gu Fu Zhou was one of them. What Hu Fu Ji said wasn't at all like something a proper general would say. Lin Qing Yu was silent for a long time. He couldn't help but say, This person that you're talking about is really General Gu. General Gu? Gu Fu Zhou? Hu Ji said, Han Yan Darren once said that if a parent person has personally experienced walking the line between life and death, it is not uncommon for them to change their temperament after being lucky enough to survive. Perhaps General Gu really has had a realization and wishes to return to the capital to live in peace and comfort. Then Ching Yu nodded. Perhaps. Hello, Soft Spoken. How are you doing tonight? I hope you're well. That's very exciting. Hmm. Yes, my time seemed to be off with people. Everyone's very, very busy lately. Oh, goodness. Well, I'm just trying to contemplate whether or not... <laughs> I'm just trying to contemplate whether or not to continue on and do one more chapter or to wrap this up. But since you just popped on, I feel like I should do one more, even though my jaw hurts after doing Hoochie's voice. I don't know why. Hoochie? Hoochie. Uh, da 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 da. Uh, da 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 da. How much... Hello, Plague Carrington. How are you this evening? Hello, hello. Thank you so much for joining me. 
well, Ken, if you're here, I should, I feel like I've got more people than I've had all stream, so I should feel like I should continue. Um, yeah, okay, we'll go for it. Uh, by the way, <laughs> Li Wencheng is dead. <laughs> it's not, it's not a spoiler. It's not really a spoiler. Um, yeah, okay. I promised four chapters. I'm going to deliver four chapters, damn it. Been lurking here for an hour or so. <laughs> That's, that's actually very cool because my counter has had said that I've been my uh, viewer counter says that I've been reading by myself to myself for the longest time. So or since this dream began, so my counter's broken. But I love that you're lurking. I appreciate the lurking. I loves it. It's good. I turn that off. I don't know how to turn it off. <laughs> I wanted to. I wanted to turn it off, but I cannot figure out how to turn it off. Um, I'm sure there's a very simple, easy way to do it. I have not yet figured it out. I think it's in like settings, but then again, I don't want to just click. Oh, just, just easy way to, okay. Uh, I, I, no. On our dashboard. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Yay. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's so good. Appreciate it. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, well, then stream manager. Under dashboard, stream manager. Look at you with all the answers. Okay, super. <laughs> yeah, okay. This is turning out good. I think we're going to... I'm waiting for lynching you because he's genius and boss and awesome. I think he's going to figure out like that, that <laughs> the new lazy general goo is actually Luan Cheng. Okay. <clears throat> I have followers and viewers info off. Then I don't stress until I get the update email from Twitch. That's a really good idea. Wait. Has spoken. Damn. I don't know why I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that. There. Okay. 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 How do I get it? Oh no, I clicked something and I don't know how to get out of it. <laughs> I'm not tech savvy, damn it. Oh, there's a little X there. Ah, oh, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> You, you just get to listen to me flail. Okay, I'm going to start on chapter 43. Are we okay to start? Is there anything anything that I should go over or readdress? If you're completely lost as to where we are, Lu Cheng is dead. It was incredibly sad. I cried all the way through all four chapters and it's on Twitch and YouTube if you want to hear that complete mess. So onwards. I see. I don't know how to, I don't have, I have these, these are the only hands I have. I kind of wish that I did have wavy arms, but that's a whole thing. I waves. There. <laughs> Chapter 43. To this day, 70 days have passed. Oh, and uh, Luan Chang made Lin Ching Yu promise that he wouldn't move on for 100 days. That within the hundred days, Luan Chang would find his way back to him. So it's, yeah. <laughs> so good. So that's why 70 days have passed is important. After receiving the emperor's appointment, Lin Ching Yu did not delay a second longer. He returned to the Hu mansion and began to pack up, preparing to formally draw a line between him and the Nanan Hu's mansion. When he married... He only brought clothes and medical books. Later, he added one Huan Tong. All these he would be taking away now that he was leaving. The rest was family property. He and that person... The rest was family property he and that person snatched away together. The silver was stored in the bank and exchanged for silver notes. The antiques, calligraphies, and paintings the deeds to farmlands, shops, and houses, as well as what was left of Wen Shi's dowry. 
he all took with him. Several stewards have been making an inventory of all the items for the greater part of the day, but still couldn't finish. There were simply too many things. As Lin Ching Yu watched them pack the things in boxes, a sense of satisfaction at having exacted revenge rose in his heart. Naturally, he had no need for so much money. Neither of his parents were extravagant people, and he himself didn't have use of anything to spend the money on. But he would rather give all this money to the roadside beggars than leave it to Nan and Hu's mansion. These riches were given to him by that person. Why wouldn't he take them? Pen Shi had been handling matters of for Lin Ching Yu the entire time. She has been in charge of the household for so long, naturally she knew about the family property. She watched as the Blue Wind Pavilion was practically emptied, as the greater part of the warehouse's contents were taken away. She remained silent. At this moment, this branch of the Lu family has withered. The incense burning in front of the temple has been severed. There was only one proper master left in this enormous Hu mansion. No matter how much money there was, what was the use? She had dismissed the servants who had served Liang Shi and her children before. She had dismissed the servants who had served Liang Shi and her children before and it didn't cost much to keep the rest. In the end, Lin Ching Yu didn't completely empty out the Hu Mansion. He left behind some fields and shops for them. Even relying on just these, it was enough that she would never have to worry about clothes and food her entire life. On the day Lin Ching Yu left, Pen Xu went to the Blue and Pavilion to see him off. Xiao Jin. No, I should call you Imperial Physician Wen, Lin. <laughs> and she smiled gently. I wish Imperial Physician Lin all the best in the future. May you be a famous doctor like Lin Yan Pan who practices medicine to help the people. This might be a bit difficult. With his pettiness and vindictiveness, how was he to become someone like his father? Oh. I'm going, what is that noise? The sky opened. <laughs> Thank you, Lin Ching Yu said. I shall let the Jiang Xishong stay at the Hu Mansion. He may be of use to you. If you do not find it disagreeable... You can let him continue to help you with managing the household. Even though he was leaving, he still wanted to keep one hand within the Nan and Hu's mansion. The Nan and Hu has served the emperor for many years. He may still be worth using. Absolutely feel free to lurk. It's, it's... <laughs> I always hate interrupting to read the... To, uh interrupt the read anyway, so absolutely. No worries. That was Ghost uh, Ghost Wanderer. They were always worried that they had to entertain me. No, no. This is me here for you. Feel free to just listen. <clears throat> Panshi might have seen through his deeper meaning, but she didn't say a word, merely nodding her head. Pen Shi was an obedient and smart person. Then Ching Yu did not find it repulsive to work with such a person. Seeing that Pen Shi had lost a lot of weight, that wrinkles had begun to appear at the corners of her eyes, he spared her a rare few more words. As I remember, you were sold into the Hu Mansion back then. Pen Shi said, Yes. Back then, after my mother departed from this world, I was left all alone. Even had I not entered the Hu Mansion as a concubine, 
I would have ended up serving as a slave or maid to another rich family. If you, if you also wish to leave the Hu Mansion, I can help you find a way. Then she was momentarily stunned. Her grip on the silk handkerchief in her hand tightened. Seeing that she didn't immediately agree, Lin Qingyu figured he already knew the answer. Or do you wish to continue looking after the Nin and Hu? I... And she sighed faintly. I have been in the Hu Mansion for more than ten years. This is my home. If I leave, where else could I go? Then Ching Yu said, Since I would be helping you leave the mansion, I would, of course, make sure that your life in the future wouldn't be worse than it is now. Pen Shi shook her head and smiled bitterly. This concubine deeply appreciates Imperial Physician Lin's kindness. It is just that Master Hu is my husband, after all. How can a woman leave her husband? Lin Ching Yu disagreed. There is no such thing as being unable to separate from someone. Even more that there is no such thing as one being unable to live without another. You don't believe that? He glanced in the direction where the memorial tablet was enshrined, and said indifferently, One simply needs to get used to it. Just like how he was now. Was he not living well? Pen Shi didn't want to leave, but Hua Lu knelt down and begged Lin Qing Yu to take her away with him. Hua Lu was originally a maidservant given by, the, by Wen Gugong to Lu Chang. She didn't have any attachments towards the Nan and Hu's mansion. Lin Qing Yu originally intended, intended to let her return to the Gugong's mansion, but she herself wanted to stay by Lin Qing Yu's side. Before, before young master Hu left, the one he was most worried about was Xiao Jin. Hua Lu promised young Master Hu that she would serve the Xiaojin with all her heart. That after he departs, she would urge the Xiaojin to eat well and sleep well. Hua Lu's eyes were red with tears. I beg, Xiaojin, take Hua Lu with you. Lin Qing Yu chuckled lightly. D did he say that? The jet. That Jang thought that as soon as he left, he wouldn't eat or sleep well. He really thought too highly of himself. Hua Lu nodded. Xiao Jin, just accept Hua Lu, please. Lin Qing Yu said, Tomorrow, I will send someone to the Gugong's mansion to get your deed of indenture. Hua Lu was both surprised and overjoyed. Thank you, Xiao Jin. You have now become a member of the Lin Residence. From now on, there is no need for you to call me Xiao Jin. Hua Lu nodded like a pound. <laughs> Hua Lu nodded like pounding garlic. Thank you, young master. Before leaving, Lin Ching Yu finally gave the Nan and Hu some face, and went to seek an audience to bid him goodbye in person. However. The Nan and Hu was unwilling to see him. When Lin Ching Yu married into the Nan and Hu mansion last year, Nan and Hu was still the right hand of the emperor, in charge of the entire Ministry of Revenue. Naturally, he was somewhat well regarded, but in just a short year, he had become a hopeless person, with a head of gray hair and a completely apathetic heart. He didn't even know that his family property had been hollowed out. But even if he knew, what could he do? In the end, Lin Ching Yu went to the Lu family's ancestral hall and let six cents of incense for Lu Chang. Among those, three sticks he lit in place of that person. After doing this, 
Lin Jing Yu left the Nan and Hu's mansion, taking with him dozens of carts of property, a bunk bed, and that person's memorial tablet. Walking out of the gate, he turned around and glanced at the solemn vermilion gate of the Hu's mansion, and at the words, Lu Mansion, hanging high above it. He didn't know if Liang Shi, before she succumbed to madness, and the Nan and Hu, as he lay in bed recuperating, if they regretted forcing him to marry into the Nan and Hu's mansion. If Liu Chao Song, before he died, and Lu Nan Tao, as she spent night after night alone at home, regretted humiliating him, it was only right that they regret. He liked seeing the people who have offended him weep bitterly, regretting their actions. <clears throat> after leaving the Hu Mansion, Lin Ching Yu did not return to the Lin residence. In the eyes of others, young Master Hu has been dead for less than three months. His body has yet to grow cold. And yet, that male wife of his has already requested to leave his husband's house of his accord. Not only was he not abiding by the etiquette of living in widowhood, but he was also appearing so blatantly in public, such utter disregard for etiquette. Was he not afraid of being called on by his deceased husband in the middle of the night? He already was. Rumors of how a male wife was inauspicious intensified in the capital. Lin Ching Yu may not care about these rumors but he still had to think about his parents and his younger brother, after all. Even though Mother Lin wanted him to return to the Lin mansion, he still refused. Long before going south, he had asked Jiang Xian, Jiang Xishan to buy him a three-structured courtyard house in the capital. While it wasn't some grand mansion, it was quite enough for him to live. The house was not too far from the Imperial Palace, and the Lin residence The house was not too far from the Imperial Palace and the Lin residence, and everything in it was already in its proper place. It was simple waiting for it was simply waiting for its master to move in. The servants were all personally selected by Jiang Qishon. They were all honest, taciturn, and capable in their work. Their backgrounds were also very clean. As soon as Lin Qingyu entered the door, the steward led them all to shout in unison, Master, welcome back! Lin Qingyu. Master? Hua Chong burst out laughing. Young Master is only nineteen this year. Why did you call him Master? You're making him sound old. The steward explained with a smile. Master has split from the family, and he is now the head of his household. So naturally, he is Master. You do not need to call me that, Lin Ching Yu said. You can continue to address me as you have before. The servants then changed the way they addressed him. Yes, young master. Lin Ching Yu enshrined the memorial tablet of Jiang somebody in the morning hall and ordered his servants to look after it. They had to make sure that incense. They had to make sure that in uh, that incense was kept burning, morning, noon, and night. People were coming and going, busy putting everything in order. He gave scant attention to other rooms in the residence. However, he had to see to the arrangement of the study and medicine room himself. Lin Ching Yu put the books he brought onto a bookshelf one by one. Quan Tong ran to him and asked, Young Master, where should we put the bunk bed? Lin Ching Yu thought for a while. Just put it in the study. I'm sorry, can we take a moment here to just absorb and love how much Lin Ching Yu actually misses his husband? 
even though he's like, who fu- who the fuck cares? Like, he's gone, he's dead, he doesn't matter. And yet every little itty bitty thing, he's like, I, like, mm, I can't even. I'm loving it so much. <laughs> like, like Lin Chin Yu is one of those people where it's like, you go, you love him. Admit you love him. No, he's my husband. Show him respect. <laughs> Like, he's so incongruous, and I love it. I love him. He's wonderful. (laughs) In the future, if he didn't feel like going back to the bedroom to sleep, he could spend the night there. He still hasn't slept in the lower bunk. At this time, Hua Lu moved in to a spot... Moved in to pot... Oh. Hua Lu moved in a pot of green bamboo and muttered, It's already March, and it's still snowing. It's snowing? Lin Ching Yu paused and looked out the window. Sure enough, snowflakes were fluttering outside. On the first day of the move, Lin Ching Yu tidied up the study until late into the night. He decided to simply spend the night in the study. He was lying on the lower bunk, listening to the indistinct sound of the night watch in the distance. One slow and three fast. It was a steady cynic. cynic. This day, too, has passed. At the end of last year, that person left on a snowy night like this. Today, seventy days have passed. Lin Ching Yu raised his hand and touched, and touched the plank of the upper bunk. Jang wanted him to sleep well, but how could he sleep? <laughs> but how could he sleep on such a snowy night? If Jang were still alive, he probably would be sleeping better than anyone else. Fortunately, once this bout of snow was over, winter would truly come to an end. The last snow of the winter fell for three full days. Lin Ching Yu, dressed in the official uniform of a 7th grade me- medical officer, walked on snow inside the pla- walked on snow inside the palace walls. Leading the way for him was a little eunuch with delicate and pretty features. It hasn't been long since this little eunuch took up his post. It was his first time seeing such a beautiful doctor, and he couldn't help repeatedly looking behind him. The Dayu's official uniforms were mostly dark-colored. This imperial physician Lin had a slender figure and a striking face. Dressed in the indigo-colored official uniform, he looked even better than the ladies in the harem. Really? (laughs) The two were walking when the little eunuch suddenly heard the beautiful doctor call to him, Gong Gong. The Lee... The little eunuch thought that he'd been found peeking and said guiltily, Is there anything you... Is there anything you need, Imperial Physician Lin? Lin Ching Yu said, Is the Eastern Palace far from here? It's not far, the little eunuch said. Go forward and turn left. Walk for half a stick of incense and you should be there. Lin Ching Yu nodded. Thank you, Gugong. The little eunuch's cheeks were slightly red. Imperial Physician Lin is very polite. The day you placed great importance on the medical field. The Imperial Medical Office and the Imperial Academy were of equal status, and they were located on both sides of the northwest of the palace. The government offices and the palace were separated by only a wall. After the students of the Imperial Medical Office have completed their studies, they could pass through this wall and become Imperial Physicians in the palace. Lin Ching Yu skipped this step and became a 7th grade medical officer, 7th grade medical office of the Imperial Hospital, by relying on a prescription for the epidemic. The, u- the little eunuch stopped. Imperial Physician Lin... We have, all, we have arrived at the Imperial Hospital. Lin Ching Yu looked at the glittering words, 
Imperial Hospital. His heart was filled with a tranquility he had never even thought of. He was finally here. Walking eastward from the Imperial Hospital for a stick of incense, one would find themselves at Qingzheng Palace, where the emperor handled government affairs and took short rests. At the moment, in Qingzheng Palace, the emperor was discussing with the senior ministers and the crown prince about Gu Fuzhou's resignation. Gu Fuzhou sent ten letters in a row asking me to allow him to return to the capital immediately, as if staying in Yang Liang for more than a day would kill him. According to Zhu Mingwei, according to Zhao Mingwei, he stayed up most of the night busily writing these reports. The emperor livid with anger. This Gu Fuzhou, who used to cherish words like gold, is now writing so many words. Just what is he doing? That's a horrible voice. Please apologize. I'm sorry. It's sticky throat. After saying so, the emperor waved his arm and threw all the reports on the dragon table to the ground. The minister knelt on the ground. Please calm your ma- Please calm your anger, your majesty. Xiao Cheng knelt down with them. The floor was a mess he saw several of the scrolls roll open. At the end of each report was written, Your servant wishes a speedy return. Oh, yes. Oh, no, wait. I think that he changed the days. So originally, originally, I think he said 100 days. I think Lu Chang originally told uh, Lin Ching Yu, wait 100 days, I'll be back. But then he goes, no, that's... Uh, that's too many, so many days. Oh, I almost want, I'm, yeah, I'm going to go back and see. Um, how do I do this again? Let me just, because I'm fairly certain. Let me see here. Okay. Wait, no, wait. Contains. Go up. Ayo. Yeah. Okay. It's not letting me pull words. Go up. I'm not. Oh, damn it. Give me the number. Damn it. I was so sure. He said, wait for me. Hmm. Ah, there it is. Ah, uh, there it is. Wait for me for a year. And then wondered if a year would be too long. He had known, they had only known each other for a year. For what reason would he ask him to wait for a year? It doesn't need to be a year. Half a year. No, a hundred days is enough. If I don't come to you within a hundred days, just treat me as having died. We can agree on a secret signal. Oh, that is it. It was a hundred days. Okay. So yeah, so that's what it was. So the reason all of those reports are saying, get me out of here, is because he knows he has to get back to Lin Ching Yu within the hundred days. Oh, and doesn't it take like a month or more just to get back? Just to get from where he is back to the capital? Because the father's there. So I can't remember if it's a month or three months to get there and back. Thoughts. So yeah. Anyways. So that's it. Those are our four chapters for this evening. So that was chapters 40 to 43, which if you can include the zero, that's that's four chapters in total. Um, I will be continuing this on Wednesday uh, with chapters 44 and up. Uh, again, it's four chapters per stream, which is what we're going for. Um, I mentioned this at the very beginning, but I'll mention this now because I actually have people watching. Hi. Um, I'm looking or thinking about expanding this stream to include more than just the reading. Um, so here are my ideas. I'm just going to read them out quickly and you guys can tell me, think about it and maybe put in chat or in comments. So we can do, um, uh, oh, for this channel. Oh, none of these are interesting for anyone. 
I joined ACS. Thanks. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. I'm so glad you've picked up on ACX. Are you auditioning? Have you gotten any leads, any jobs? Keep us updated. I would love to know your progress. I'm currently trying to track down one of my favorite authors and see if they'll let me read for them. <laughs> but they're, they're individually published. So I'm like, oh, I really love your stuff. And I know you've got like mountains of work, but uh, how about we do this? You and I. Um, which is also something once you get your por portfolio up, you can do if you go on Amazon's the easiest and you find uh, especially independent publishers. But if it's a book that you love, you can say, hey, you know, love your book. Would you like to collaborate on this? And it's possible. I'm almost there. I just have to find a project. I was like, that is the tough bit. That is the tough one. So you have to keep in mind that it's like I'm going to be stuck with this for a month or more to get all this out and done and proper. Especially on your first book. Your first will take longer. That, uh, my first project was not a good project. Okay, so I will mention a few things that I'm thinking about expanding this channel with is I have this channel, my Twitch channel. I also go, other stuff goes on the YouTube version of this channel. And then I also have SAF, Sarah's Audio Fan Fictions, which is both my podcast, but it has my website and as well as YouTube page. So I was thinking of doing this, everything that you see, um, a SAF version of that where we cover everything from fan fiction reviews to how to properly write it, where to post it, um, pitfalls that authors fall into, that kind of thing. Um, and then on here, I was thinking keeping it all kind of Asian dramas, Don May, BL, manga, anime, all that fun stuff on here. Also, I have two video games that I really want to play. One's not being released until November, and one I have now. I'm just waiting to get the card, the graphics card, not the graphics card, the thing, the chip thing that you plug into one end and then you plug into your computer and then you play. Um, that one. <laughs> so, and that'll be on here as well. So I'm going to be in the coming weeks. I'm giving myself a lot more time here in the coming weeks, putting up a poll to see what people might be more interested in. All those sound cool. You're not cutting this down for me. Oh, also, um, I'm going to be putting out a few tutorials on um, two product, only the ones that I know really well. One of which is Calibre, which is a, if you don't know what Calibre is, it's a personal library system, which you ha can download onto your computer and you can keep your Amazon books, your Kindle books, your um, any downloadable books, but also your fan fiction and all of that. Take it with you. Keep it organized and all that. There's tons you can do with this program, which not a lot of people know about. That'll be coming up probably on SAF. On here, I wanted to do a thing on Canva. Yeah. So if you don't know what Canva is, it's a relative, there's a free version and a paid version, of course, but it's a graphics program that helps you put out, um, say, social media. Yes, you can also do that with Calibre. So there's a ton you can do. This, um, where I read off of, this is, I make this through Calibre. So this, wait, let me go back to it. So this here is actually an ebook that I made from taking it off of the... I taking it off of the uh, author site, translating it through Google, then putting it into an HTML in here, then editing it all. And then, because I'll show you the ones that I haven't edited yet. Oops, where is it? This one here. So I don't know why that says that it didn't get edited, only half did. But so that's what it looks like. And then I got to go through and edit it. And that's done through Calibre. Um, but yeah, so I want to do a tutorial on that because... I think so many people would love to be able to use it and to take it with them. Um, and also I want to use Canva. This, everything that you see on here was made in Canva. And Canva is a, a free site. Uh, the only thing that's on here that wasn't made in Canva is my actual avatar. And that's, I did the art for her and then I gave her to a rigger and he had to do the, the extra art. But other than that, she is mine. Um, but all everything in here is all off of Canva. Everything you see like 
for SAF, for all my social media, Canva. It's amazing what we can do. So those will be coming out at some point. I just have to freaking write them. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you have any other ideas, I would love to hear your ideas. I would love to hear what other people would like, um, uh, especially explainer videos. So if you did want, if you thought that I should put out another, uh, a specific explainer video on how ACX works and how to get set up on it, um, how to get paid on it. Um, but yeah, if there's anything that you can think of, I would love to hear your comments, suggestions, anything. So feel free to like, let me know because <laughs> I'm looking for more things to draw more attention. I'm so convinced, like on Twitter, I see all the people, like so many people, oh, I love Don May, but you don't see a lot of Don May out there and it's, there's not a lot of people reading it or, or on, I'm like, I'm right fucking here. <laughs> Hello, I'm here. And, uh, so I just need to get more traffic so that more people know that we're here. Oh, also, um, I'm also thinking about doing another Don May to kind of split this up and make it last a little bit longer because as we're going, it's not going to last very long. We're going to get through it really quickly. Um, I have one that I was thinking about, but it's not showing up in like the top 10 most popular. So I wasn't sure. It's called The Wife is First. It's another time travel fic thingy. I'm looking to use Restream. Oh, oh, I can help because I'm currently using Restream. <laughs> I can help with that. I can help with that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, my brand is really important to me. And so I was originally going to like, I was going to start grinding for, um, affiliate on Twitch. And then I got some advice. Uh, there's a YouTube page and, or a YouTube video, YouTube series, where the guy's like, if you want to keep your brand and have it be you, only yours, don't do this. <laughs> and then they went through the actual business of the contract. And I'm going, oh, I don't know now. So I'm still not sure if I'm going to start grinding for it. But I did sign up for Restream because that's awesome. And it was super easy to get. Um, actually, you're the second person I've spoken to today about who wants to do with Restream. If I go on here, I'm going to... Okay, da, 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 da. Yoink. restream. Um, I love it. I absolutely love it. I'm currently on it. Hi, me. That's that's breaking the fourth wall, isn't it? Um, but I'm a huge fan of restream, and I think it's great, especially the free options. But yeah, this is destinations, but you can add, and it's, oh, so good. I'm. I was thinking about doing a um, a run through of how to use Restream as well, because again, I've mentioned it to another streamer because they're like, well, what should I use? I'm like, you could use both. I kind of want to try using the paid one, but it's expensive. Alrighty then. I think that's enough chitter. What do you think of the lab with one of your colleagues? I would love a collab. I'm, I'm nervous because I'm a wreck. <laughs> But I would be very curious as because I see all these people doing the collabs on the on, on the Twitch, uh, on the Twitter. Um, and I'm going, what would I do? <laughs> but no, I would absolutely love to. If you've got an idea, I'm probably all for it. <laughs> Let me go to your thingy. I want to see what you do. Yeeks. Let me turn browser down just in case. But yeah, I'm... What just happened? But yeah, no, I would be very willing. What just happened? What just happened? Oh. Sorry, sorry. All of a sudden, my computer started making funny noises. I'm like, you can't say that, right? Improv storytelling. 
Um, <laughs> I, I cannot guarantee if I would be any good, but I would try. <laughs> Uh, PCs are fun. See, I could probably do the improv storytelling better than... Now, when you say PCs... <laughs> this is an honest question, because there's a lot of acronyms out there. You mean computers, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. So, I... No, I'd be very interested. Yeah, computers. Um, But, yeah, I'd be very interested. We just have to figure out what to do. Because that's my thing. I'm like, oh, we, we, could, we could collab on stuff. I'm like, okay. What do you want me to do? Which scares you more? Improv or... Oh, neither scare me. If that's what you're talking about, fixing PCs, I'm a I'm bit of a computer nerd in that way. I know the basics of programming, and I will find ways around the stuff I don't know how to do. And improv, I have no problems with. I took a few improv classes and I aced that shit. <laughs> no, so neither of those ones scare me. When you said PCs, I'm going, do you mean like computer games? Because those I'm not good at. <laughs> I'm not a good gamer. I should say that right now. I like, <laughs> I'm not even going to out myself. But yeah. Do, 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 do. But yeah, so the, uh, if, I, no, I shouldn't say if, when I do the Caliber stream, it would be how to set it up with the code and how to write the code and what code to put in where in order to get it run as we would want it to. Um, that's okay. Honestly, I've been, it's been a little lonely the last few weeks. Um, everyone's been so busy so and I'm like I'm still here so I'm gonna keep chatting to no one but yeah uh did I have anything else yeah so I would um expect those in the coming little while I do have to write them out um I already did a caliber how-to video back in the day but I never posted it so that'll be have to be rewritten um, also, if you know anyone who's really into fan fiction, please send them over to my YouTube channel, um, where I will be posting more how-to fanfic vids over there. Um, there seems to always be someone on Reading Fun. Yeah, well, there seems to be, Reading Fun seems to cover a lot of different time zones. And that's one thing that the analytics said, because I'm a nerd, um, is that a great time to stream is like between 12 a.m. and 9 a.m. Friday morning. And I'm going, oof, baby be sleeping. <laughs> I see. Um, I don't have the energy for that. No, no, no. Night owl. Um, but yeah, I think I mentioned this at the beginning, but no one was here. So um, this today, June 6th, is Yui's. This little baby right here. It is his first birthday. And so uh, we spent all weekend together. That's why I was supposed to stream on Friday and Saturday. It was my plan. And then we didn't. Um, I was going to give that those analytics a try. And that didn't happen. So we spent the day together. And now I think I, I bought how many? Five mangas <laughs> on my way home today. Only one new one was released. But I had to pick up the other four because, you know, had to. Um, I put quotations around that. Um, so I think I'm going to sign off and I'm going to go cuddle with Yui and read a little bit. Um, but yeah, if you have any ideas, comments, suggestions, this bitch is going up on YouTube. Well, it's, it's actually up on YouTube as soon as I stop this because of re Restream. Thank you very much, Restream. Less, so much less work for me. And uh, But yes, I would love to hear thoughts on videos that you guys couldn't think of or would like to see. I'm all for it. But yeah, so I think we're going, I'm going to sign off. I have this thing where I, every time I raid, it doesn't turn out well. So I'm going to like not. <laughs>
my my next goal is we raided with four people and I got kicked out of that. So that didn't work very well. So I'm waiting if to have five people at once and then I'll try that shit again because that'll be the universe saying, okay, you can try now. Um, but yeah. So thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for chatting with me. Thank you for hanging in there to the end. And I will see you again, hopefully on Wednesday. But if not, whenever you're available, you can pop on by. My time has gone from 8 o'clock to 7, so I can get in before 10. And uh, this week's episode of SAF will be having two episodes coming out this week. Um, a Modazushi fanfic and Buffy fanfic. Uh, over on SAF, the podcast, two coming out because I didn't get it last week. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. And I hope you have a wonderful night and a happy rest of the week. Till next time. Happy listening. <laughs>